Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Wonderful to be with you all. It's seven o'clock on Wednesday evening, seven o'clock South African time, that is. So it means it's the map show. And I know that tonight we're in for a, an exciting time. The topic is The Big Bang by Glenn, Glenn McQuirk. And it's a case of how does it begin? Uh, I'm looking forward to the discussion afterwards. I just urge you, if you've got any questions, please pose them or any comments. We'd love to hear from them. But without further ado, I'm just going to hand over to Glenn to tell us about the Big Bang and how it begins. Well, good evening. This is really the best day of the week or the highlight of the week because I get to spend my mornings with Peter and I get to spend my evenings with Peter again. And so we can have some great uh, discussions in the morning which lead to even better discussions in the evening. And so this morning, while we were busy talking, um, I wrote down on a piece of paper these two words, big bang. And uh, I want to share with you this evening some, some thoughts that I have around this subject because I'm sure many people already have their own concept of what the Big Bang is all about. And there's many scientists out there talking about interesting theories about how things began and how the universe came about. And, of course, this discussion is live, very lively, and it's continuing, and they're finding new information constantly. But I realized that there are many things that exist today that did not exist a short while ago. And they too came into existence. And the question is, how did these things come to be? And maybe you sitting there this evening listening to the session because you too have something that you want to birth, that you want to bring about, that you want to manifest, that you want to impact the world in some special way. So I thought I would just share a little life experience with you that I had um, when I was uh, in my early 20s. Uh, here in South Africa, we had uh, something called conscription, and I spent a couple years of my life doing military service and uh, being an engineer which is what i had studied we were uh, put into the engineering corps and we did engineering kind of things which was great uh, and one of the things if you don't already know is that the engineers are the people that not only build bridges <laughs> for the military but they also destroy bridges so we had to learn how to work with explosives. Now, I, I'm just imagining for a moment, as I use these words, the YouTube algorithm is already running, and that that word explosive has probably ended up on some CIA desk, and there's a, a whole group of people uh, beginning to listen to this talk with intent. <laughs> so I, was, I just remember uh, seeing plastic explosive for the first time. And, and plastic explosive reminded me of plasticine. At least we used to call it plasticine. When I was a child, we had this uh, doughy type stuff uh, that we used to play with and we used to make all kinds of shapes. In fact, it was pretty much like clay uh, because I grew up on a farm. We used to also play with clay. And um, so we were each given 
a piece of plastic explosive and we were told that this is something that cannot function without a particular device. So we could play with this plastic explosive and nothing would actually happen. <laughs> so we, we, we kind of didn't believe it at first, but, you know, we listened to the lecture and we, we, uh, we began to shape and mold this plastic explosive because you could push it into any little crevice and you could do something with it. What it required for it to do its job as an explosive was a detonator. And the detonator was something really small. If you can imagine a, a lead pencil, the detonator was slightly thinner than a lead pencil that you used to write with. And it was about one third to half the length of a pencil. And this small little device would set off a mini explosion, which would which is what was needed for the plastic explosive to actually ignite and do its job. And so while I was, uh, while I was in the military, we, uh, we tested these plastic explosives. And of course, we blew up little things on the range, as they would say. And uh, one evening when we were reaching the end of our training, we decided that instead of each person setting off their own plastic explosive, we would combine everyone's plastic explosive. <laughs> and we made, we made a heap of plastic explosive that was at least uh, a half a meter in height and probably about a meter in diameter. We connected the, the cordex uh, to our charger, and to the detonator, and we moved about one and a half kilometers away from this plastic explosive. And at the appropriate moment, somebody pressed the button, pushed the lever, whatever it was that they did to send to, to ignite the cordex. And my goodness me, I've never seen such a big explosion in all my life. You see, we had put this plastic explosive under what was what would one would call a a, a scrapyard. Uh, you know, today where they where they throw old motor vehicles away. So there were car parts and all kinds of metal fragments. And of course, when this explosion went off, there were pieces of metal falling where we were, one and a half kilometers away. And it all started with this small, tiny, insignificant little detonator. So what I want to share with you this evening is that every big thing that you marvel at today began as a small, insignificant idea, a kind of a, an aha moment. A, a revelation. It, you know, it comes at the most unexpected time. It, it comes when you least prepared. It kind of catches you off guard. Sometimes it's staring you straight in the face and you just can't believe it can be so simple. <laughs> You know, you're looking for a complicated way to start whatever it is that you're busy with because you think to yourself, it has to be complex. I was reading or watching a short video on the Apple headquarters, which apparently cost in excess of $5 billion to build. And also... Previously, I had watched a video on how Steve Jobs began <laughs> with that company in a garage at his family home. And, and those two pictures just don't seem to relate. On the one hand, somebody sitting in an in a unclean garage where they've got to reverse the car out so they can do what they need to do. And on the other hand, there's a $5 billion head office that people look at. So when people look at the $5 billion head office, they think there had to be some magical, uh, 
endless pit of resources for this person to start that particular vision. Yet, what started it, what ignited it, was a passion, a burn in their heart. And so I want to encourage you this evening to, to start listening to your heart, to, to start being obedient to the things that make your heart beat faster. So often we have these moments, we have ideas, we see things that could be, but somehow we have a negative self-talk that suggests that we are not capable of achieving everything necessary for the vision to become a reality and we don't pursue it. I want to tell you the only thing that you and I need is the ability to see that vision already accomplished and have a desire in our heart that is strong enough to ignite the, the, the passion that's necessary to push you forward in any circumstance. When people connect with something that they're passionate about, they don't turn around looking for somebody who's going to provide them funding. They don't look around. They, they don't look at the clock and say, it's time to knock off now. I've been working too long. No. <laughs> when people connect with their passion or when their passion is ignited, they do it any time, day or night. In fact, they will do it day in and day out. Because there's something incredi incredibly magical. I, I wrote a message to someone earlier today and I said, when you do your Map for Life presentation, magic is going to happen. And as I wrote that word magic, I also saw the word map-ic, M-A-P-I-C, which was for me was kind of something epic is going to happen. And, and so the idea of a Big Bang is, is almost what, what I'm wanting to say to you this evening. It's, it's the thing that you are aiming to create. The vision that you have comes from what appears to be nothing. It's like there is nothing there and suddenly you begin to speak about what you have seen and as soon as you begin to declare the very words that describe the vision that you see, it begins to kindle that flame of passion within you. The knowledge about the subject increases. You get more excited about it. It causes you to begin to take action. And when you begin to take action, you set things in motion that's going to create what others will see as a big bang because i want to tell you nobody saw steve jobs or um, bill gates or elon musk when they started their projects you know i can just imagine their bill gates at the age of 12 sitting behind a computer with his with these lenses that were as thick as a magnifying glass busy typing away writing code nobody saw that Nobody saw Steve Jobs in the back of his garage and said, there's a guy that's going to build a big company. Nobody was next to Elon Musk while he was sharing a bed with his brother. While his brother was doing programming, he was sleeping and they changed in their office because they had nothing else. And maybe what Peter said to me this morning is he asked the question, he said, what's, <laughs> what's the opposite of courage? And he, and he gave an answer that was completely unexpected. And he said, the opposite of courage is conformity. Maybe alongside of that is our desperate urge to remain in the comfort zone. The Big Bang is what happens when you step outside of what everyone else expects you to stay in. When you cross the line, when you step out of the comfort zone and do something that goes beyond what you feel comfortable doing, when you do that, you have ignited the cortex. <laughs> You've ignited that fuse that's going to burn down to the detonator that's going to set off the explosion. Now, of course, in the old days, 
it was more like uh, Mission Impossible. If anybody's watched the start to Mission Impossible, they write they, they, they ignite the old gunpowder fuse and it slowly burns all the way to where the explosion is going to happen. Of course, today, <laughs> things are electronic and you touch the button and it's instant. You know, things happen. But when it comes to our vision, it's like the old days. It's like igniting that old gunpowder fuse. And it takes time from inception to the point where other people suddenly experience what you began and so i want to encourage you to begin to write down your vision write down the desires of your heart put it on paper because i know when you do that one of those ideas one of those desires is going to cause something to happen inside of you. It's going to create an experience that nothing else can ever do. Because when you connect with your purpose, <laughs> something amazing happens. It grabs a hold of you and will never let you go. It will pull you. It will draw you. It will push you. It will, it will do all kinds of things to ensure that you stay on that path. Because when you are on that path, you feel like you are alive. So maybe, just maybe, when Peter said the opposite of courage is conformity, perhaps today, the reason you're not experiencing what you desire is because you haven't taken that step of courage, that step of faith. You haven't believed in the vision that you've seen. And as a consequence, nothing has started. Today is the 17th of August, the year 2022. Now, they say whenever you do a video, never mention a date. <laughs> but I want to mention that date specifically because I believe that if you're listening to this session this evening and you catch the hidden message in what I've shared with you, and more importantly, when you listen and engage with the panel this evening and they talk about the ignition point, uh, that that spark that sets off the, the 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 explosion. When they talk about that, listen carefully because amongst them is life experiences that can literally transform your life. You have something inside of you that needs to burst forth. We want to hear your big bang, and so tonight could be the start of something epic. Tonight could be the beginning of something that's going to last a thousand generations. So I want to encourage you and I want to encourage the panel to really take a look at this concept and we can together start something really exciting. So after I after this short break, Peter will come back. I just want to remind you that every Wednesday evening, same time, same place. Join us. Share your comments. We would love to hear from you. Peter will introduce the panel in a moment. fantastic wasn't it thank you glenn i really got excited about it i got excited this morning when we when we were talking about these this concept of of, of, of the big bang and i just thought from the, the listener's point of view 
uh, I went through a Big Bang experience way back in Christmas 1999 when I got a copy of the first Map for Life, which wasn't even called Map for Life in those days. It was called Your History in the Making. And I had one of those life-changing moments. So for me, Map for Life has become a big bang in my life. And I know I know that there, for so many other people, it's been a big bang experience. And I just like to hear from our panel, and we've got we've got Heather from London, and we've got Janine from Randburg with us. And I just like to hear them sort of talk about their big bang moments. So Heather, would you like to tell us about your big bang moments? Um, hi Peter, hi Janine. Um, actually, there's far too many to 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 talk about. Um, <laughs> but. Um, let me see if I can zone in on one. Um, one of my Big Bang moments actually didn't look like a Big Bang when I first was introduced to Map for Life many years ago by my brother. And then um, when I got the book that I found in Bikini Books down in Cape Town in Gordon's Bay whilst on holiday, I think maybe that was more like what Glenn was talking about. You know, when you wind the wire out for the explosive and you light it way over there and slowly it starts burning. Um, but when I realized that there was a free gift in there and I could actually utilize the course and um, then bring the training to become a coach with Glenn, uh, that for me was a big bang moment because I was really, really excited about what the future would hold, not only for me, but for the people I'd be able to help. One wonderful. And, and Janine, what about you? Okay, so my first introduction to Math for Life was a number of years ago and things were going really well and I sort of had a big bang and then it fizzled out um, due to a lack of focus. And then just before lockdown, I picked up Map for Life again and I joined the Map Cafe. And that brought a big bang. It started moving then. And a lot has changed since then. A whole lot of stuff has happened. <laughs> now, the, the, the lockdown period. Was that a was that a big bang experience? It certainly was. It certainly was a change of lifetime, and uh, we all all went through uh, experiences. To many people, it was it was they sort of took the lockdown and it became a lockdown for them. But Janine, the way you talk about it was not a case of a lockdown. It was a case of a time of learning and a time of growing. Would you like to expand on that? Okay, so in the lockdown, I, my, my business was born and it's it, it's still in existence and it's growing. Um, during the lockdown, I spent a lot of time. There was so much free learning available online that I expanded my mind significantly. Um, and things that, you know, usually cost, well, prior to lockdown, they cost insane amounts of money. Um, were available for next to nothing. So lockdown was a feast for me. I really enjoyed lockdown, and I'm an introvert, so it was like even better. <laughs> oh, what, wonderful. Heather, how did you experience the lockdown? Well, um, lockdown was fantastic for me because I've always wanted to work from home, and, and I've always been told that the kind of work I do cannot be done from home which was so wrong because it all worked out beautifully. But I think lockdown, if people sit down themselves and reassess what they went through during that period, it actually was a big bang for a lot of people. Yes, there were a few that couldn't cope, but for a lot of people, it was a big bang. You know, fathers got to spend more time at home. Parents who, who especially over in the UK, that commute for two hours, four hours a day, actually, they got that time at home with their children. They were able to do things yes. with their children. They were, they had to become innovative because you had to now create games and things in your own home that you could do with your children. You couldn't send them off. Um, I also found that when I used to go for my daily walk, people were more, more polite. People were greeting me. They never used to greet me before. I'd say good morning, good evening, and they'd just look at me and walk past. 
Now people wanted to talk. Yes, they maintained the distance, but you know, communication improved. So for me, lockdown was a big bang for a lot of people. New careers, new ideas. So yeah, very exciting period. W wonderful. Janine was with us this morning as we were having having coffee and breakfast, and and we spoke about the big bang, and we spoke about how we. One of the things we touched on was that maybe we need we need a big bang because so many people have, be, have become trapped in this this prison that was that was there and we need and we need to break out of it and that was what we were talking about but just listening to both of you both of you were in a prison you were out there really enjoying the change and that the change you were able to to maximize the opportunity and I think that's what's exciting about this this big bang concept of 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 maximizing the opportunity um, just another thought that went through my mind when we were talking about it was we just finished the commonwealth games now i don't know to what extent you two have watched the commonwealth games but i watched quite a lot of it and uh and so there's just that concept that every event, or, or certainly the athletic e events, started started with uh, somebody firing a gun. There was a big bang that started it off, and, and I thought, well, you know, I just like that concept, and uh, it's a case of getting us going. And he would, what would you like to say to that point? Well, before the big bang, there was always a warning, right? Yes, yes, yes. So maybe we yeah. should look at it like that, that there are big bangs coming and we are being warned about them. We're just not paying attention or we get too eager yes. and we fall start. You know, there's always yeah. some of us who think, right, it's going to happen. And we start running with it. But well, hold on, we, we're running at somebody else's big bang, not our own. So I yeah. like the concept of warning, pause, get ready, and then just go for it. Yeah. Janine? Yeah, look, um, I think the lockdown was the warning. And I think the gunshot is, is, is imminent. And we need to start working together to um, make sure that, that that race actually gets won by everybody. Because if we don't work together, it's not going to work. Yes. I just seen a post coming through from Inguadi from, from East London, and, and he's spoken about that when life offers you a, a lemon, we must make it turn it into a lemonade, and that the, the lemon is, is, is that warning. Would anybody like to expand on that thought? Turning a lemon into a lemonade. You know, every day has challenges, Peter. Every day you get a lemon. It's what you do with it, yeah. you know, and, and, and every day you've got to conquer it and, and, and do something marvelous with it. Make that lemonade. Or maybe yes. soak it in vinegar and then suck on it later. But you know what I mean? You've got to do something with every opportunity that comes your way. I like, I like that. Now, coming back to what Glenn was talking about, and, and the question of, of courage. And the opposite of courage being conformity. Did you think about that at all? Janine was in the discussion this morning, and I saw she was blown away by the thought. Janine, would you like to start off and talk about conformity as the opposite of courage? Absolutely, because conformity is safe and easy, because everybody will accept what, if you're a conformist, everybody will accept what you're saying and doing. If you challenge the grain, people will be um, resistant to what you're doing. And yes. I don't think many, many business people, if they conformed, their businesses would never have been born. Their um, purposes would never have been fulfilled because they would have been pulled back. Because, I mean, when you start a business, oh, no, it's not safe. I, I can tell you so many people have told me, no, you can't do that. It's not going to work. And and the reality is conforming is easy. Getting on, um, Glenn has this thing about the conveyor belts in, in the um, airport. 
you know, you get on the conveyor belt and then you get off on the other side in a box. And and if you conform, you are going to stay on that conveyor belt. You're not going to find the flowers next door. Heather, would you like to add anything to that? Yeah, well, so so your concept is that the opposite of courage is conformity. You know, um, Earl Nightingale said that most people tiptoe their way through life, hoping to make it yeah. safely to death. Okay? Yeah. Um, yeah. Why do they do that? Because a lot of people view life as survival. They don't yeah. view life yeah. with a passion. They don't they don't view life as something that you got to get excited about. They're not grateful for this time that we have. And it is easy to conform, as Janine says, because sometimes we don't want to be noticed. When we're teenagers, we just want to blend in. We don't want to stand out. And yes, so after yes. years of blending in, we then go through life blending in. We don't want to make waves. And it does take courage to step out. You know, I mean, like, um, Glenn, Glenn once said that, you know, sometimes people think the wheel's been invented already. But they, I, And I thought of that a lot. But you know that there's so many wheels now. There's You can add mag wheels. You can make the tire fat. You, you can change, take something that is just blended in, that is normal, that is accepted, and make it into something so marvelous if you just stand up tall. Yeah, so Glenn, Glenn was talking about Steve Jobs, and I one thing I think we can say about Steve Jobs was that the question of conformity was the furthest from his point of view that he had to be totally non-conformed, and that he went out to create something that was unique. And I think just following his example, that we need to we need to be aware of it that that really. And I'm challenged by the thought that conformity is the, is the opposite of courage. But I'm also thinking of that verse from the Bible, which talks about not being conformed and how we need to be transformed. And we need to change our, change our thinking. And when we change our thinking, we change the way we are. Would anybody like to talk on that little thought? Yes, if you change your thinking, um, everything changes because the way you perceive the world is how you, how the world around you will be. Because if you think negatively and you encounter others, you're going to see them through the lens of negativity. So no matter how good they are and how wonderful they are, and, and things, the way you approach things also changes because of your mindset. So if you believe in, in something magnificent happening, something magnificent is likely to happen um, or if you if you embrace um, if you're in a situation where something bad happens you get that lemon right yes you can focus on the lemon and just the lemon will rot in front of you but if you think what can I do with this lemon or is there maybe something beyond the lemon you know, you can actually create something or move away from the lemon, <laughs> shall I say. Um, yes, an, example, yes. an example would be that um, I lost my job and I could have kept staring at the fact that I was unemployed and the market is not great. But then I decided let's start a business and it worked. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Heather, any comments so from your side? Yeah, you know, you're talking about what you think about and 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 what it relates to. Um, so why is do we all view a lemon as a bad thing? It's because of what we've been told to think about a lemon. Oh, yeah. Right? But why as Janine says, change what you think of a lemon to be. I mean, instead of thinking of a lemon as something sour, something that's gonna curdle milk, think of it a lemon as yeah. A lot of the English people think of a lemon as something to add to their pums, you know, something to make cheesecake with. You know, think of a positive yes. thing that you can do with something. So it's all about what you think about. You know, you only think that a lemon is bad because somebody else told you that it was bad or sour yes. or whatever the case is. So just change the way you think. Be original. That's where the Big Bang comes in. Now, just, 
Okay, comment has, has come through from, from Nguadi again, and we're talking about transforming, and Nguadi says, let's transform the environment. Now, Janine, I know what you were doing this afternoon. Would you just like to talk about transforming the environment? Or was it too early? <laughs> we're getting there. <laughs> How to put someone on the spot? <laughs> I, 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 I just... I got excited. I got excited this morning uh, because there are a number of a number of projects we've been working on, and we've been working on them for a long time. And and then lockdown came, and 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 because of lockdown, a lot of things went on to the uh, back burner. But suddenly we've had an opportunity to work on systems and do all sorts of development. And the time is ripe to go out there, not only transform ourselves, but transform society and transform the environment. Uh, I think the purpose era has really arrived. We've been, we've been called for a specific purpose. Would anybody like to expand on that thought? Well, I think before you go there, Peter, I know that uh, Nguari is saying one should um, strive towards transforming the environment. But I don't think you can transform the environment until you transform yourself. I agree. I agree with you. We need so, to. We we so, need to. We need to inspire individuals to transform themselves, and then first, to think yeah. beyond that, and to and to think of it. To, to think of what they can do for society and the environment. And I think it's so wonderful. There's so many, there's so many opportunities out there. Would you, yeah. Yeah, I, I was extremely excited this morning because it's um, what I'm seeing is a collaboration of, an, of a number of different organizations that wouldn't normally talk to each other. And with with the objective of making people's lives better, and that is so exciting for me. My heart wanted to burst when we were talking this morning. And yes, I was in the same boat, job. Yeah. <laughs> and and um, the, the things that I'm doing, you know, is is a channel to to make it happen easier, which is so exciting, so exciting. <laughs> mm. Now, Janine, before you joined us, I just I just happened to pick a book up that was that was here, and I didn't know to what extent it was going to fit in with the theme of the Big Bang. And the book is the book is entitled "Chase the Lion," and it's written by Mark Batterson. And he says that if your dream doesn't scare you, it's too small. And it's a book based on just a little throwaway verse from the Bible where, and let me see if I can lay my hands on it, and whereas there was also Benai, son of Jehodah, a valiant warrior from Kabzeel. He did many heroic deeds, which included killing two champions of Moab. Another time, on a snowy day, he chased a lion down a pit and killed it. And Mark has taken that story, and that has become the story of his life. And it's a case of having a dream uh, that is a dream that can scare you. You know that for that to succeed with that dream, you need your creator to be there and empowering you to reach out and to conquer that dream. And I think that's what we've been talking about. And that's the big bang. So that's what we want to inspire our listeners to do, is to be inspired to go out there and chase that lion and make a difference to both in their own lives and then to society and the folk around them. So, folks, I've just been wonderful to share some of these ideas with you. I don't know if there's anybody who would like to add another thought before we say goodnight to all. Heather? I was just going to say there are two lions that you're chasing. The one lion is your dream, and the other lion that you're supposed to kill that you're chasing into the pit is the one that's stopping you from going for your dream. So conquer Wonderful. both. I like it. 
Conquer both. Conquer both. Janine? Don't be afraid to chase your dream. And don't think Get out there and do it. Don't think it can't happen because you're too small. Because if you reach out to your creator, it will open doors for you like you won't believe. Wonderful. Heather, Janine, thank you for being tonight. Glenn, thank you for an inspiring talk. And everybody out there, thanks for being with us. And we look forward to seeing you next Wednesday. Good night. Sleep tight. Good night.